Okay. It's great to see it's time for the 23rd uh, Melbourne Underground Film Festival, which is on from December 8th to the 14th. And as always, it's my great pleasure to speak to the Festival Director of MUFF, Richard Wollstonecroft. Richard, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Yes, thanks, mate. Peter, how are you? You well? Yes, yes. And uh, there's your uh, poster, which looks good. Um, so, yep, there you go. Now, let's start off by selecting films and so on. What were some of the challenges that you had in uh, programming this year's festival? Well, um, you know, uh, you know, we always get a lot of entries at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. So, you know, it's um, we always look for stuff that's, um, you know, like not the kind of stuff that plays at, you know, the Melbourne International Film Festival or Sydney International. So anything that's kind of, you know, anything that's woke or anything that's like, uh, you know, like that, you probably should send that to a different festival. Uh, we look for stuff that's, you know, um, just a bit different, you know, um, that doesn't, you know, the, the outsider art that's not connected to um, the funding bodies. Um, you know, we like to, you know, get the filmmakers before the um, funding bodies, um, you know, get their, you know, claws into them and make them behave, make them, you know, toe the line ideologically or whatever. So, you know, we look for um, stuff that's just, you know, different. And, by, you know, doing that, we've been able to, you know, discover a lot of the greatest talent that's come out of um, the Australian film industry in the last 23 years. Um, people like James Wan, who, uh, you know, obviously went on and did the Saw franchise, which became the biggest horror franchise in history. Patrick Hughes, who's, you know, be making those, um, you know, My Boyfriend, Hitman, whatever those films are, and he did The Expendables. Uh, he went on to great things after we discovered him at Muff. Um, Greg McLean, we discovered, he did Wolf Creek. Um, Scott Ryan, we discovered at Muff, um, who went on to do Mr. In Between, which is probably the best TV show to come out of Australia, um, you know, the last 20 years. Um, so, you know, it's extraordinary that, you know, a festival with a you know, virtually uh, no budget, no government funding can discover a, a lot of the best filmmakers that have come out of Australia. I mean, I often wonder how we do that. Um, you know, but we do it by just simply uh, looking for stuff that's original. We don't necessarily care about the budget. We just care about you know, has it got something original about it? Has it got an original voice? Uh, is the filmmaker, you know, um, you know, got a real determination to, um, you know, express their ideas in the art? And you know, if you look for that, you you do discover great people. Yes, uh, well, well done on that. And you also have uh, some international uh, films, including a special guest. I noticed Larry Wessel. Larry, Larry is uh, an incredible filmmaker. He's a kind of outsider filmmaker from the United States. Um, He's never been to Australia, so he's look, very much looking forward to coming out here. Um, you know, he's done a lot of really interesting work. Um, you know, he would go down to like Mexico and film bullfights. Um, there's something maybe Ernest Hemingway about what he does, but you know, he would just record, um, make these fascinating documentaries about outsider culture. And, and um, you know, his Palace of Wonders, which is a documentary we're playing, uh, is his latest film, which is a good summary of you know the kind of work that he does. But you know, he'll probably have a, lot, a number of his other films that he'll bring with him that he'll sell here, but they're. They're all really fantastic, and he's definitely, um, you know, a counterculture kind of figure. He's not particularly well known in uh, in, in cinema uh, appreciation circles, but you know, he's someone people really should get to know. Uh, people in LA know him, you know, on the alternative circuit because he sells his work independently, places like Vidiots and you know, independent video stores in Los Angeles. Um, you know, he's a really fascinating guy, incredible a raconteur, um, really incredibly knowledgeable. Um, he used to live in Manhattan Beach, and you know, he used to go to the same video store where Quentin Tarantino worked. He would rent films from Quentin Tarantino. So, <laughs> you know, he has a very deep film knowledge and um, he's just a very unique guy and figure. And uh, I was lucky enough to work with him on a film I made called The Second Coming uh, when I was in Los Angeles. Um, uh, I, it's funny, I, I got some money to shoot a documentary about the porn business. And so I got about a hundred grand from somebody. So I decided to make three films instead of one. I made the documentary about the porn business called The Last Days of Joe Blow, but I made an, another film that's a bit more avant-garde, a bit like Terence Malick, uh, called The Second Coming, which, uh, and he's got a, a part in it um, with a number of other alternative kind of, I called them like Andy Warhol, contemporary Andy Warhol superstar people um, that I wanted to put into a film. So when I travelled the world shooting this documentary, wherever I went, I would just on a, you know, um, video, little portable video camera, shoot these, shoot this film, The Second Coming, Volume 1 and 2, which... Uh, uh, it's turned out rather well as well. So there you go. How interesting. Yes, I've never heard of him. So your description of him sounds very interesting. So, and he's doing a masterclass as well, I noticed. 
He is, yep, yep, yeah. He really does. You know, he's going to play like scenes from his favorite film. He has very eclectic film tastes. He's really a unique figure. I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if I could actually compare him to anybody. He is that unique. But you know, I, I guess some kind of um, maybe someone like Werner Herzog, you could say. But if Werner Herzog was more interested in strange culture, um, obviously Werner Herzog is interested in that. But like maybe stuff that's uh, you know things like wrestling, bullfights, you know things like that. If Werner Herzog was interested in more topics more like that, you you this is Larry Wessel, you know. Okay. Well, he's a special guest of uh, this year's Muff. Um, now, notice the, uh, speaking of strangeness, uh, opening night film is High Strangeness. Indeed, indeed. This was film was uh, executive produced by Brian Trenchard-Smith, who is, um, you know, my favourite living Australian filmmaker. Um, you know, he uh, made such classic films as Turkey Shoot, which is my favourite Australian film of all time, yeah. which I think David Stratton thinks is the worst Australian <laughs> film of all time. I think it's the best. So David Stratton can get stuffed. He's, he's a boring old man. You know that? <laughs> oh, okay. I'd like that. I've liked David Strauss sometimes. I've liked him sometimes, but like uh, on some reviews. But anyway, High Strangeness, yes, it's kind of a UFO, um, you know, conspiracies, um, you know, like Deep State. Uh, it's an Australian film. You know, I think Muff is a very appropriate platform to launch that film. Um, there's been a special like introduction recorded by Brian Trinchard Smith for the festival. Um, you know, I think it's a great film to open Muff and very much in our flavour. Oh, terrific. I had a, a very long chat to Brian Trenchard-Smith a few years ago, and, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's made some remarkable uh, um, schlocky films, which is great, you know. We we don't make so enough my, of that. Well, my friend, you know, John Hewitt remade uh, Turkey Shoot, you know, and uh, I was the first unit director on that. And uh, <sighs> so it, was, it has something to do with, because uh, uh, I think Brian Trenchard-Smith was the executive producer of that film. So it was great to have something to do with a great man. So, you know, we, we doffed the hat. Doff the, <laughs> Doff the hat. All right. Excellent. Now, uh, on opening night, High Strangeness is followed by Frank Housen's uh, film uh, Remembering Nigel. Indeed, yes. This is the special events, which is the Larry Wessel and uh, I'm just pulling out the pages of the catalogue. It's at the printer at the moment, so uh, it should be ready tomorrow. And, um, you know, Frank Housen has been the festival patron, um, you know, at, at Muff probably for about almost 15 years now. You know, he was over in LA when I started Muff, but when he returned, uh, you know, he's a, a very good friend of mine and um, something of a mentor. And, you know, he, he gave me my second feature film um, I made called uh, Deliver Us From Evil. It was a kind of a serial killer film. It's never been released. It starred Lockie Hume, uh, who went on, you know, to do a lot of great stuff with the first film that Lockie Hume was ever in. Um, Toddy Goldsmith played the female lead. It's kind of a serial killer film, uh, home invasion film. And, um, you know, uh, so, you know, I've known Frank ever since I made that around 1992. And, um, you know, he uh, he made this film because I, I suggested when he returned from Los Angeles, because after Boulevard Films had problems, he um, went uh, to L.A. for about 10 years. When he returned, I said, you know, you should make something, you know. And uh, he, he made this film. Originally, it was a short. And it has a tremendous amount of celebrities in it. You know, I mean, some of the people are like Martin Landau, Mark Rydell, Bud Tingwell. Um, you know, what's his name? Moonface is in it. You know, uh, Strahanus Australian, P.S. Sloan, Tommy Dysart, Alex Scott, Michael J. Pollard. I mean, you know, he was in uh, many, many a film. Stephen Burkoff, John Savage. You know, he just, Frank knew so many interesting people and then just decided to get everybody in it. So quickly went from a short to a feature. And then, um, you know, he's had a little bit of trouble um, apropos uh, getting the film released in, Due to some various rights issues, because part of it was made in America with an American company, so um, he's just produced a new version of it, the Redux version, which will be playing at Muff. So there you go. Very good. So who is Nigel? Uh, well, it's kind of autobiographical. Let's say that it's about it's about it's about Frank. Let's be honest. Um, it's about sort of uh, Frank's autobiography and about it's whole. It's a bit like Zelig. You know what I mean? Like uh. talking about somebody. You know, you don't really meet the Frank character. You sort of see photographs of him and things uh -huh. like that. They all talk about him. So um, it's it's a bit of that kind of thing. I think it's uh, very well done. It has a, um, a you know, tremendous uh, Burt Newton, Moonface, of course, and many, many others. I think Molly Meldrum's in it. Everybody's in it. I think I'm in it, for God's sake. You know? So there you go. <laughs> Star of stage and screen. All right. Excellent. All right. Now, let's talk about Closing Night. And you've got uh, two films there, Police State and Great Awakening. 
Yes, well, you know, we do uh, we do play films that are a bit sort of, um, you know, conspiracy orientated, that kind of thing, you know. So Police State is the new film from um, Dinesh D'Souza, who did the film 2000 Mules, about the election rigging in the 2000 election, where he uh, attempted to prove that the, there'd been some mischief going on there, because uh, we all remember, uh, you know, like Donald Trump was winning when we went to bed, and suddenly when we woke up in the morning, Joe Biden had won, you know, and, and the votes had all gone straight up. So, you know, he investigated that situation, and then there was... Um, the Great Awakening, um, which was, uh, you know, like a film, you know, there's, there's a thing called The Great Reset, um, which is something that the global elites, you know, Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, all those kind of people want to bring in something called The Great Reset, 15-minute cities, all this kind of stuff. But there's a kind of, uh, I guess, a reaction against it uh, called The Great Awakening, which is where people wake up to the fact that there are these kind of evil oligarchs ruling the planet and people are kind of sick of it. People don't like to be told what to do. This sort of came out during the pandemic. Um, in the freedom movement and in, uh, in other kind of movements around the world. So this is a documentary about that. And that's our little sort of conspiracy theory and, um, you know, resistance uh, double feature on Closing Night. Okay. Yes, what would must be without films like that? So uh, well done. <laughs> uh, that's right. But you're not going to get them at the Melbourne International Film Festival. They wouldn't play a film like that. No. You know, if a bit, you know what I mean? And it's just, I think that terrible, you know, the fact that, you know, there's only a very small Iverton window that what you can get away with. You know, I looked up the Festival of Dangerous Ideas and every idea is politically correct and woke. It's like, hang on a minute, why don't you give us some people who actually do think differently? You know what I mean? And um, at Muff, we always try and at least present a little bit of that. You do. Something to offend everyone. So I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. And I noticed just to round out the features, you've got Zappa, Plan 9 from AliExpress and Ridgewood River. Indeed, indeed. You know, they're, they're two uh, good little Aussie films there and another great film from uh, from Russia, nonetheless. You know, of course, we love Putin. <laughs> so, you know, we always support the Russian people in their struggle for national identity, mate. And uh, so, you know, I'm looking, you know, I mean, we wish we could play more films, um, you know, from all around the world, but, you know, we are limited. Um, we don't have any government funding and, um, you know, there it is, mate. You know, we, we play as many as we can, mate. Sure. No, I understand. And, uh, yeah. yeah, keep going. You were going to say something else there. <laughs> I know we have a good short section, much shorts. You know, yes. we have about five uh, selections of shorts, with about 50 shorts from around the world. I can just show you the two pages, you know. Um, so, you know, we have films from all around the world on all different subjects. Um, I'd like to thank Aphesia Filet, who helped me select the uh, shorts this year. Um, she's very net literate, because I'm not particularly good on the internet, so people might be surprised to know. And, um, you know, uh, she's really good at, you know, handling uh, all that stuff, film freeway and doing all that stuff. And um, so, you know, it, it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it this year. You know, um, I think it's turned out well. And obviously, you know, we, uh, we keep the festival um, going because we think there should be some alternative voices. And, you know, not everybody has to agree with the woke agenda. So there can be some people who, who rebel and, um, you know, still want to, you know, do whatever the hell they like, which is the Melbourne Underground Film Festival. Fair enough, fair enough. And I notice amongst the shorts is, is one that sounds fantastic, Zombies versus the Men's Shed. <laughs> oh, definitely. That's, that stars uh, Roger, Wer Roger Ward, Tony Bonner and Vernon Wells, which are two Australian... <laughs> Uh, cinema legends, three Australian cinema legends. Yep. Roger Wall was obviously in uh, Mad Max, Turkey mm. Shoot. Vernon Wells was in Mad Max 2 and many, many other films. And uh, Tony Bonner's an incredible Australian film actor. Uh, he was in some Hammer Horror film about the kind of like the Stone Age I saw recently on special edition. Probably up here in my Hammer Horror section, which is just above <laughs> me. So, you know, the, uh, Travis is a fantastic filmmaker from Queensland. He lives up around Cairns. Um, you know, he, he uh, you know, he's done some really fantastic fe features and shorts, did a great feature uh, called Land Landfall. Um, and, um, you know, he this is his new short um, called Zombies versus the Men's Shed, which is basically uh, uh, you know, Roger, Tony and Vernon fighting off a bunch of zombies from their uh, shed. So there you go, mate. And what else would you do on a crazy afternoon to fight off some zombies? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about venues because you it's always difficult for you to secure cinemas. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, the festival suffers from cancel culture to a little bit, mate, you know. Um, so unfortunately we, uh, you know, have to look around. So we've got a, 
We've got a warehouse um, in, in Brunswick, uh, and then we've got uh, the Purple Emerald, uh, which is in uh, Northcote, which is a nightclub venue, uh, which is owned by a friend of mine, and a place called the Q, Q Room, which is out in Thomastown. You know, so you got to get, you know, get on, you get on your, uh, you can get a, you can get a train there. I think you can probably get a bus there, or you can drive, mate, old school. And um, you know, he, that's also owned by a friend of the festival. So that's the kind of thing we have to look at. We need to get uh, venues that they are owned by people who are, uh, you know, um, friends of the festival. And um, and away we go, mate. And um, you know, also the festival is cash only, cash, mm. because there's a movement in the in the world at the moment that's you know wanting everybody to pay, um, you know, digitally using a little card or something like that. And uh, we think that's the beginning of a kind of totalitarianism. And um, you know, so uh, obviously, I mean, I use a card sometimes myself, but like I always think cash is important because uh, you know we we don't want to submit to uh, you know. Um, the global elites who want to track every single thing you do. We don't want to live in a 1984 kind of nightmare. So, um, you know, bring your cash and come along to Mars. That's that simple. I suppose the only drawback to cash, and fair enough that you're doing that, is that people can't book in advance. They have to turn up. They do, yeah, they do. But they, like, I mean, Muff doesn't doesn't tend to sell out. I mean, occasionally you'll you'll have a full screening, but you know, Muff, you know, if you get there, if you're a little worried about tickets, just come ten or fifteen minutes early. I'm sure you'll be fine. So uh, that's the way to do it, and uh, that's the way we're doing it in 2023. As uh, you know, we continue to run the Melbourne Underground Film Fest. I'm as surprised as anybody that this festival is still going. <laughs> well, congratulations on your perseverance. So uh, that's great. And thank just you. For, and for, thank you, uh, Peter, yourself for uh, interviewing us and supporting the festival over the years. Um, you're you're a great man. Of course, no, I always uh, support uh, uh, film festivals and alternative film festivals. Um, if people yeah. ask me about the quality of projection, sound, and so on, how will that work? Well, it's not uh, it's not the Australian Centre for the Moving Image, mate. Let's say that. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I would love to run math at the Australian Centre for the Moving Image. Every international guest who's come here says this festival's great. It's been around twenty years. Why is it not support? Why are you not given you know a hundred grand a year to run this festival? Why is it not at the best cinema in Melbourne? I have no idea. Considering the fact, probably because I run it. You know what I mean? And I'm a bit politically incorrect. You know what I mean? This is <laughs> yeah. the moment to get rid of it, mate. Because it, as it was run by anybody else, they would have embraced this festival long ago. You know, I mean, the Sydney Underground Film Festival, I mean, that was run by Stephen Popescu, who came to Muff and, you know, basically asked, you know, wanted to copy it. And so he, he sort of did, but he ran it, and he's, he's a lot more politically safe than me. And now it's, I've noticed that the Sydney Film Festival promotes the Sydney Underground. Uh. I've never seen the Melbourne, the Melbourne International promote the uh, Melbourne Underground Film Festival, <laughs> never. And it never will, mate. It never will. No. The, we really the, are the outsiders. You know, we are the true outsider film festival in Australia, mate. And there it is. Fair enough, fair enough. But, uh, yeah, I can understand the uh, issues you have in getting the word out and uh, and finding appropriate yeah, venues. Yeah. It's, it's difficult, mate. You know, it's not easy. And, you know, um, uh, it, it's, it's a constant struggle. But, uh, you know, we do our best. That's all I can say. Of course. No, I absolutely understand. And going for 23 years, well done on on that. Um, so if people want more details, if they go to muff.com.au, that will work? Yes. Go to muff.com.au. Uh, the best place to actually go is probably the Facebook page, Melbourne Underground Film Festival uh, on Facebook. Um, I constantly update that. And if there are little changes to things that are happening, I announce them all there. Um, so just go to the Facebook page, Melbourne Underground Film Festival, um, and you'll see our catalogue there, which ha has this artwork uh, by Frank Housen, who does the art. Uh, Frank's also an artist, so uh, he's been very kind to uh, give us... Uh, he's probably for almost 10 years now, he's supplied us with different artwork um, for our festival, which has got a distinctive flavour. And, um, you know, check that out and be part of the 23rd Melbourne Underground Film Festival. <laughs> OK, uh, absolutely. Rebel. <laughs> Rebel. Disobey. Disobey. <laughs> Disobey. Come on. <laughs> Okay, Ex excellent, we're Richard. We're the okay. punks, mate. Okay. <laughs> and Richard, just a quick question. I, You know I always ask this at the end. Seen anything else yeah. of late that impressed you? Well, yeah, I saw a film recently by um, David Fincher, The Killer, which was probably my, my, my favourite film of the year. Um, mm. It's on Netflix now, so you can watch yeah. it on Netflix, but I went to see it at the cinema. Maybe I think maybe Cinema Nova is still playing it uh, at the cinema, but... Yeah, I, I thought that was brilliant. It's uh, an extremely well-made film. Um, mm. uh, I, out of subject matter, I, I'm fascinated by stories like that. Um, 
Uh, have you seen it, Peter? Yes, I have. It's very good. I, yeah. I agree. Fassbender yeah. is excellent in the lead role, as oh, is yeah. Til yeah. Tilda Swinton has a, a, a key role as well. She's great in it. Yep. Yeah. No, I thought that was very impressive. And I obviously really like Oppenheimer as well. Um, you know, I got into the whole Barbenheimer philosophy. I don't really like Barbie that much. I thought that was a bit too woke, but it was sort of <laughs> still fun. It was sort of still fun, funny. It was always correct. Critiquing the patriarchy. That's how you can tell you're in a woke movie. Whenever they mention the bait with the word patriarchy comes up, you just go, ha ha. I'm not sure woke. Here we go. Woke. This one's woke. Uh... So I mean, Barbie was sort of fun, uh, you know, in a in a crazy way. Uh, but Oppenheimer, I thought, was a pretty serious, uh, uh, really good film. I, I, I took a few people to see that, actually. I took uh, a friend of mine and then uh, I even took my mother to see it. You know, So there you go. So, um, you know, I thought that was one of the better films of the year as well, mate. So they're, they're my two picks, The Killer and Oppenheimer. Very good. I, I certainly endorse your, your comments for those two films. And uh, we've been speaking to Richard Wollstonecroft, who is the uh, director of Melbourne Underground Film Festival, December 8th to the 14th uh, at various venues. Yes, go to muff.com.au for more details or the Muff Facebook page uh, for updates and details. And, uh, yep, yeah, excellent. And, uh, Richard, as Thank always, you. thanks for talking with me. Thank you, Peter. Always a pleasure to chat to you. Okay. All the best. Bye-bye. All the best. Bye-bye.